Hey, welcome back to our series, Project X, where we're dealing with our Yamaha SVHO Cruiser. Today we're gonna handle, it's called QSTS, but it's really your trim system up here that we're gonna deal with replacing this cable. This is what's responsible for the tilt of your ski. And we'll make those adjustments on the fly while you're going. If your nose is too up, we can bring that back down while we're cruising. And after eight years, it's been responsible for a lot of impellers shifting up and back and forth and, and starting to feel a little tight. This is a great time for us to replace this. We're also going to deal with our steering cable today. Again, great opportunity to actually see these with the covers off because now you're going to be able to see how it's ran. And with the engine out, you can really see how it's routed all the way back. So you get a good chance to see this. Now these cables can be replaced and can be serviced with the engine in, but it's a really great opportunity with the covers off, with the engine out, to see the proper routing so you know how it goes back in and how it should lay inside the hull all the way back to our jet pump and our impeller system. We're gonna talk a lot about what are some of the things that you need to do with the cables. Can they be lubricated? Are there adjustment points? Those are things that are very important to anybody doing these cables so you know how it's done the correct way. And we're gonna do this in two different phases here. We're gonna start with our actual trim cable first and then we'll get to the actual steering cable which you'll see underneath here. And with everything removed, great opportunity to see it up close. So we're gonna handle them one at a time. Brian, my assistant, is also gonna be working with me on getting this done. It's a lot easier when you have two people. So Brian's gonna be helping me out. Um, I'll probably start up front here. He's gonna, I think I'm back. gonna put him up back and make him do the, start removing the impeller. Cause it is important that the actual impeller has to come off. So tell us a little bit it, about that. It sure seems like it. The, the manual isn't 100% clear, but it seems like there's no way to get the cables out where they go through the hole with the jet pump still in place. They're uh, probably 12 or 15 inches in there and there's no room around them. Maybe we'll get lucky, maybe with, the, with some custom tool you could get the, the nuts off that secure the cables and the grommets into place. It's my bet that the whole jet pump's gotta come down. So I'll walk you through all that stuff from underneath the backside. Yeah, we'll make sure you get to see all of the disassembly and installation of the new cables so you know how to do this on your jet ski. So stay tuned, we'll get into it next. This season of Project X is brought to you by SBT, the largest supplier of high quality jet ski parts in the world. Again, we're gonna start with the quarter, or please say that again. Quick, quick shift trim system. Yes, QSTS, quick shift trim system. <laughs> Cable which on this will, one. Which we will refer to as trim from here forward. Absolutely, it is a handful to say. So we, we're gonna start with that one first. So I'm gonna start up here on the actual handle area itself, and Brian's gonna be starting Down out below. back. <laughs> and starting to get to, the, to some of this impeller and jet pump system that we've gotta get out of the way to be able to do this. Well, what we're removing right now is the actual, this is where your cables are gonna go. And you can see how they're they wrap around, so allowing movement of one cable to the other depending on the way that you twist. And this is what we'll have to get these cables out of here. One thing you'll notice, these are pretty dry. Uh, in your maintenance catalog, and your maintenance, uh, I'm sorry, in your maintenance manual, some of your pivot points are actually right here. Not the cable itself, but the pivots right here. And I believe, in, on this one, we would just use a little bit of silicone right here as part of normal maintenance on this cable. Doesn't look like it's been lubricated in a while. Um, but we're replacing the cables anyways. Good opportunity right now to take a look and inspect all the, see if there's some, some dirt and debris in here. Definitely gonna wanna clean this up before we put it back on there. And again, we're gonna use silicone in these areas where you get your pivoting, so put this off to the side right now and now we can start running our cables out. I think I know why the uh, uh, speedometer isn't working. Is it broke too? Uh, it's completely gone, it's missing. One of the things the owner told us was that the speedometer wasn't working. And you found and this why? this is a pretty serious indicator. 
as to why it's not working. Oh, it appears the sensor is completely missing and the wires are sticking out of this grommet there and they're severed off too. <laughs> Chances are it might have come dislodged and then gotten ripped out by the force of this thing going down the water. And so we will look into and get this sorted out for him. I think it's a good opportunity to go ahead and get that working for him. What do you think, Brian? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so to start off, disconnect our trim linkage. Push back on the lock collar. Easier said than done. And then pop the ball joint off. Same thing here on our, I'm sorry, reverse bucket and the trim systems here. Push the collar back, pull the joint off. That would have been easier with the bucket down. And you know, a keen observer will notice our water flag hose appears to be missing. And from the look of the water flag, that might have gotten yanked off there too. I wonder if he deleted this system or if this was a, just came off by accident. I'm sure we'll find out soon. Next up, I do want to pull this steering link off here. So now we've got our steering link disconnected. It's time to drop our reverse bucket off of here. There's a whole bunch of 10 millimeter bolts that hold it up on along each side. And then I'm gonna relieve the spring. Of course, anybody watching this right now knows I picked the right part to start and uh -huh. <laughs> stuck you. Yep, yep. <laughs> It's all right, I like a good challenge. <laughs> this is why I was using an impact for the first few. Every one of these bolts has got thread locker applied. You bring up a great point, Brian. They do use a lot of thread locker on these jet skis in a lot of different areas. And you'll see that in the actual service manual that they tell you to reapply thread locker to various components. And um, that has a lot to do with the vibrations and things like that. that the jet ski will experience on its lifetime on the lake or the ocean or pond or wherever you got it going on. These things definitely live a hard life. They do. But to be fair, there's a chance I could have maybe left this reverse bucket on, but I certainly want the ease of access to everything else we have to touch today. I'd rather just spend the time now to pull it Brian, what's the component we're removing right now? We're removing the reverse bucket. This is the plastic shroud that drops down behind the jet pump nozzle, redirects water flow forward so the craft moves in reverse. Excellent. And this will really help us get access to these cables that we need Absolutely. to get access to. Oh. Now that we have it all removed, we're going to get this out of our way. It looks like it needs a good cleaning too, as we can see. But as Brian was saying, this is what's going to be in front of that nozzle and we change. So a lot of times this is all you really get to see when you're looking at the back of a jet ski. And this is the reverse bucket itself that allows us to go into reverse when we need to do so. Now you also have a great chance and great opportunity to see the actual nozzle itself and where and how water is directed and how it moves to steer. And now we also have more access to our cables that we're going to be servicing as well. Again, your pivot ball right here should be cleaned and lubricated as normal maintenance on your jet ski. And since that's underwater, that would be marine grease. Absolutely. We only want to use marine grease on this. If, uh, if you don't have anything else, go out and buy some. <laughs> I say we just, let's go ahead and just, uh... Remove the entire jet pump assembly while we're back here. Yep. We'll get a little bit of a better chance to see everything that way as well. Yeah, so absolutely. we're going to go ahead and remove the entire jet pump assembly. As Brian was saying, we might be able to get to these cables and, and service them in here. It's a little bit of tight quarter areas to really get back there to get that grommet loose and to be able to remove the entire cable assembly. But we have some more work to do to the impeller anyways. It looks a little dirty anyways. We definitely want to clean it up while we have it out. 
I'm just gonna take it all the way out. So you can see that being done as well. We're gonna take the entire jet pump assembly off. It'll give us much more access to our cables that we're gonna be replacing today. So Brian, you were saying it's nice to be able to just go ahead and crack them loose, and especially in aluminum so you can feel if something was going on. Why was yep. that? If uh, aluminum is soft and it can gall up and stick to the threads of the bolt. And when you go to turn the bolt out, it feels like it never gets loose. It's constantly dragging, hard dragging on you. And that's because it's ripping the aluminum out of the housing and pulling it out with the bolt. So I'm using an impact with most of these because of that thread locker and I wanna jar anything that's gold and stuck, I wanna jar that loose and help get it out. But for something like this, I'll typically crack the bolts loose by hand with a ratchet. That way I can feel with my hands whether something is going wrong and if it does go wrong, then it's, it's a simple job of spraying and some penetrating oil, running the bolt about a half turn out, quarter turn in, half turn out, quarter in, and getting those threads to let go and the bolt will come out. Now keep in mind, just because you have a stripped out bolt or anything like that, doesn't mean that it's the end of the world. There are multiple repair kits out there available to go ahead and uh, create new threads as you will. Um, but always be aware when you're taking things apart, if it feels like it's giving you a little trouble, uh, work that bolt back and forth a little bit to see if you can kind of get it to break free and not damage any threads. Yep. It's a great point, Brian. So here on these jet pumps, on the nozzle end, there are two pry points. One's up here near the top left. The other one is down here near the bottom right. So just a small amount of force is usually all that's required. What we're doing is we're, we're breaking that seal. There's a sealant that's applied right at the seam. And that one came out pretty nice and easy, actually. Sure did. And you can see some of that sealant is still left over, this caulking right here around the, the And of course, you want to make sure you clean that up and apply new sealant per the manual when reinstalling this. And of course, we'll show you that uh, as we go as well. And yeah, the, uh, the water flag was not deleted. That port is still open. Okay. So we have had so we, I mentioned earlier about how the water flag didn't have a hose connected. This is the nozzle that comes out, or this is the hose barb that supplies water to that flag. Now that hose is missing, and I thought maybe this had been deleted, meaning someone had filled this port because they didn't want the flag anymore, but that's not the case. This port is still open. So what we have had is the equivalent of a pressure washer right about three inches away from the hole. So water's been spraying at pressure all underneath this thing. So we will replace that hose and get the system working like it should again. Right, so here we're gonna pull on each side of this trim cable and then slide it. Out of the yoke. Now where's the other side? There we go. All right, so I can, I can see this little plastic piece here which is holding the ends of the cable in, and it looks like it locks into that plastic housing by those little squeeze tabs right there. So I'm gonna get in here with a small screwdriver from underneath, and I'm gonna try and apply some pressure in there and pull this down to release it. Ah! All right. We are. And as you can see, <laughs> the cable's gonna come out this way, all the way back, and then we're gonna have to run it all the way back up forward. Th this one definitely doesn't feel as smooth running through the sheathing that's in there. Um, it's, it might have a little bit of corrosion built up in there over some time. Again, it's eight years old. You can, it just doesn't feel quite as smooth as the other one. This one moves a lot, a lot more. Then this one starts to hang up a little bit. So it's probably a good idea that we're going ahead and replacing these. Remember, if you're getting some binding like this, we don't want to lubricate these cables. It's not recommended to do that. We're only lubricating pivot points, um, your ball sockets, such as right here, um, and where it actually goes into the actual handle itself, the actual grip throttle or the, the quick turn system right there. So we're going to go ahead and start installing the new ones now. 
As you can see on our new cable, we have a brand new seal. This is what's gonna keep the water out from inside our hull. So it's very important to make sure that you have it in place before you install this back, uh, back in the hull that we're gonna feed it through. If it's not there, you're gonna have a problem. But we've got a brand new seal on our cable assembly. We're ready to start feeding this back through all the way back up. It's also worth noting there is a flat on the top of this threaded insert. That flat needs to be on the top. You set the pace up there. I'm just following you. All right. There we go. There we go. So now we're ready to put on our packing tape back here and our grommet with our new zip tie. It's 21 inches from here to here. It was already marked for us. Uh, I had measured it just to make sure in case when I took it out of the package it wasn't, but. Uh, this is already right in position where it needs to go, so it's gonna run perfectly over to our actual adjuster over there. So I'm gonna run this now, get this all set up, and get the grommet back into place. Click. A lot easier to do this one before he does the before he connects up front. I had to rotate this all the way over here. Sorry, Joe, I'm trying to screw him with you right now. Um, I had to rotate it all the way over to get the cable through, but that was pretty easy. So you know, one of these cables goes up, one of them provides the tilt down for your trim. Uh, you may have noticed I didn't need to mark the old cables upon removal. Um, and you might be going, well, why didn't you do that? Are you, how are you gonna know which one goes up or down? The great thing is, is that they have these little, uh, basically like collets that are two different sizes that will fit into here. So you can know which one is for what without having to get it all mixed up. So I didn't need to mark it. They can only go in one way, which is uh, a real time saver. <laughs> See how these kind of, Gonna roll into here and then back into the groove just like so. There we go. This will go into here. All right. Now, before I go any further, we do have the adjustments right here. These are screwed all the way in right now. As a baseline, I'm gonna use the old cables as a reference point of where to set these up. The trim did seem to work well and correctly positioned on the old set of cables, so I'm gonna use as a baseline. But once we get all of our cables done and routed and get our steering one done as well, we'll make some fine adjustments that we might have to. We'll check that all and get that nozzle put back on. But for now, I'm just gonna set them up using the old set of cables that we have as a little bit of a baseline so I know where to go. Because you can see on the old cables, kind of where they're set up, you can see how much more significant thread there is than over here where there isn't really anything at all. So I'm gonna use these as a baseline, put them close to this for now, and then we'll double check it when we get the jet nozzle back on. So before we put this back together, remember this is one of your lubrication points right here. Just use a little bit of silicone right there on these pivot points, not a lot. Just using some silicone. So we've got our trim cables run. We're hooked back up down there uh, and we're hooked up up here. And again, we made those initial adjustments based on the old cable. And we're gonna see how close it is once we get the other one done. But while we have the nozzle off, it's gonna make it a lot easier 
to go ahead and do the steering cable that we're gonna handle next. Kind of the same thing up here. We got a connection up here. Underneath our steering mount runs down the length of the hull and back out to where our jet nozzle was located. But while it's off, it's gonna be a lot easier for us just go ahead and replace the steering cable now. We'll run through that procedure and you can see how that done is you can see how that is done as well. So if you see right here, if you can get a close-up of that maybe, this you gotta move back on that collar to get it to lock and unlock. If we don't, you just start prying on it, you'll damage the cable, especially if you're gonna reuse it. So make sure you're pulling back on that collar when you're putting it in your ball socket. That's what allows it to release. All right, next up, we'll pop this joint off the end of the steering cable. I don't think we'll be able to get this through the hole with this end joint still on. So this is tough to see based on the fact that the cable runs underneath our hose over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the hose off so we can get a better look at it and you can see exactly how it's ran. Plus it's going to make it a lot easier to get to the actual uh, retaining nut that's on there. So we're going to do that real quick. That way we can all get better access to this. All right. Now that that's out of the way, we can really see the actual retaining nut a lot better and get to it without trying to put ourselves in some contortionist body way. And there's not much. It's not a lot of torque on these plastic nuts. It's only about five PSI. That's why I'm not worried about using the suppliers that I am. This is not the right way to do things. But since space is so limited, what I'm trying to do is very, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, so apparently that fastens from the other side and Brian had no idea. <laughs> the best part about doing work with somebody else sometimes is the unexpected surprises. <laughs> and Brian thought it was down there that it was held and I got it up here and well, Ready to come out now. Okay, it's gotta, wait, how's it, it's gonna go out your way? Oh, okay, so it's gonna go out your way. But hold on, before we do that, we're gonna have to remove this. So, kind of looking at where it is. It's relatively centered on that. I can, I've got it right here and here. It's centered at the top of the thread here and kind of centered on the bottom of that collar shoulder area right there, that's where I'm gonna to wanna to put the new one on when we run this. But this part won't fit, I don't think, through there. We'll give it a try though. If not, we'll take it off. And that is a negative. And now it should come out, yay! And here's a surefire sign of wear. What you got? I got a hole. Really? All right. The rubber, rubber boot. This is on, mind you, this is where it seals up against the hole. So this part in the right time is underwater. I can introduce water right in around the cable sheath. So if you noticed on the last cable that we just took off, we had a plastic kind of retaining collet that we had had taken off to get that cable out. SBT has now given us an upgraded part on that. So you can see the difference in the quality. So you do have two adjustments on this as well. Just like on the other cable, you have an adjustment down here and you have one up over here. We're gonna temporarily, and just as a reference, use the old cable as a setup point for where to set these up at. These are also your pivot points right here. This is a good place to put some of that marine grease, a little dab on there when you put this all back together. And then also, I'm gonna put some inside here before I put that back on there as well. That's one of your pivot points, one of your lubrication areas as well. So. We'll do that when we get it all routed and put in place. 
Well, right now we're gonna kind of just check our initial, and we can see if you look how much difference there is. I'm just using the old one as a reference guide. It's not set in stone here. We will check everything once we have it all back in place, but I wanna get it relatively close. I didn't have too many issues before, so I'm pretty close there, so we'll lock that into place. one's off a little bit too so we'll cool we'll lock that in place as well put your new retainer on there and our new pivot point is going to go on there as well. Fresh new marine grease on there. Trying to get this thing to line up. Yep. As ah. you're seeing, got it? Success. Victory. So I'll show you what we were fighting using the old part as reference. So these two bosses on here, the top one needs to fully slide into that yellow plastic yoke that comes down from the steering head. And what was happening was it was getting stuck right about there. And there's a plate that swings in and is supposed to index on this boss from below. And then there's a locking ring or plate that slides over and locks that plate into place. But because this one wasn't fully inserted, the next plate wouldn't bottom out and the locking plate wouldn't slide over it. So now with a little bit of finagling and an extra set of hands, now we've got it all locked in place and everything is good to go up here. Joe's locking the cable down in its ties we can find approximately our straight ahead position and our steering's off just a touch. So we've got our, our steering uh, adjusted. We did do a little bit of an adjustment underneath there. Uh, and they also have you measure the angle. Going from here, you know, back and forth, you're gonna measure the angle down there to, to you get the exact distance that you need out of that sweep, which we made that correction down there. Everything looks pretty good there. Any fine, minute adjustments might have to be done once you get it out in the water. But right now it looks really good. We seem to have equal distance on the steering. So the last thing we wanna do is make sure that our trim uh, is gonna work as designed and that the distance is okay. Um, we will be doing some more additional service back there, but we put the jet pump housing back on for now. So it's gonna have us start by putting the actual trim in neutral. So I have it set to neutral up here on my grip. And then what they're gonna have us do is they're gonna have us measure the distance from A to B of the actual angle, and then we'll make the adjustment down there. So I left my adjustment here as it was from the old one. Any new adjustments could be made down here. And what we're gonna do is make sure that the distance from A to B is equal. And if there isn't, we'll make a little bit of a tweak. It looks pretty close right now, but uh, Brian's gonna check that. And that distance from A to B we're measuring from the tip of the pump housing to the uh, uh, furthest tip of the nozzle. And we're doing that at the top and the bottom and we're comparing the two together. So measuring from the bottom, I'm at two and three quarter inch. Measuring on the top, I'm dead on. <laughs> is, that, is that possible? Boy, if it's not dead on, it's within a 32nd of an inch. Like we know what we're doing. It sure seems like it. Man, close enough we're not gonna have to really I, get absolutely. into it too much. 
Um, we can check that and when we get it out in the water again, sometimes these minute adjustments are something that really can't be done until you've given it a little bit of a chance to go out in the water, just like when you're on a car. Sometimes you gotta verify your repair by driving it. Sometimes we gotta make some adjustments whenever you take it out on the, on the water. But right now, Ryan said we're real close, so I'm really happy with that. So. Absolutely. Uh, you know, again today, what we got a chance to see was doing the steering cable and the actual trim cables as well. And going through that adjustment and getting a really good, nice chance to see everything with the engine out made this a lot easier to do here than if you were to do it at home. But it should give you a little idea of what to expect and what kind of quality parts you're going to get from SBT. So for now, our cables are done. That means we can get on to our next project and trust me, we've got a lot more to come.